Hello friends. Welcome to Think Reviews Podcasts where we share our book reviews with you. The world around us is changing very fast and educating young minds is becoming even a bigger challenge with that. On one hand, it may seem that with access to so much information, children are learning a lot more than the previous generations. But they are still young. their minds still need to learn to disseminate the information and take what is good for them the constant exposure to self-centered social media posts may influence the way children assess their self-worth and turn them into bullies rather than show them how to be just plain good and kind in later life and there is why it is more important than ever that the stories and books targeted for young readers are also teaching them as well as entertaining them here at thinker views we are always exploring new authors that write for young readers and recently we came across an interesting series of books by author roshni choksi roshni has inherited two cultures through her parents Filipino and Indian add this to her American upbringing and you have an intriguing mix of cultures and imagination that led her to write her first successful series of books called The Star Touched Queen in her teenage years her work was loved by readers and so like many other author collaborations she came up with another interesting series as part of Rick Riordan presents in 2018 In the fashion of the Harry Potter and Percy Jackson titles, this series features a young girl named Arundhati Shah. So let's take a look at the first book of the series called Aru Shah and the End of Time. Let us now take a look at the cover page of this book. We have a paperback copy uh, which has been published with similar cover pages for the entire series. So This first book features a purple and golden color scheme showing a teenage brown-skinned young girl holding what looks like a lamp in her palms and the dia or the lamp that she is holding is emitting more than just light as far as the story goes this cover page captures all the central elements one the central character of arusha and second the lamp by rubbing which like the aladdin she frees more than just light and so the cover page is very apt to the story it also has a very eye catching vibrant color scheme which will attract young readers and it will be interesting to see how much more improvement can the cover page Uh, get as the time passes and the generation of readers change all in all an attractive cover page let's take a look at the storyline now in atlanta young arusha is wondering on the first saturday of her autumn break as to how will she spend her holidays stuck in the museum of ancient indian art and culture run by her mom which is also their home while rest of her classmates go away to exciting places still in her spiderman pajamas she is surprised when three of her classmates show up at the museum door to check upon her you see aru has been in habit of making up things to fit in for example she is known to say that she goes on foreign holidays with her mom that the most expensive car in the school belongs to them or that she shops at exclusive designer chains so the classmates are here to catch her and they start filming aru on a cell phone daring her to prove that she is not a liar in a moment of desperation aru tells them about the cursed lamp in the museum and how she is never supposed to light it the dare goes farther and aru lights the dia the demon sleeper trapped in the dia is free and the moment he is out time freezes around aru her classmates her mom everyone becomes suspended and frozen in what they were doing 
the sleeper will go and wake up lord shiva and the world will end only in a few days time what has aru done all is not lost yet though as aru has awakened a demon she has also awakened the dormant pandavas that are born in every generation and guess what aru is one of them her mentor protector educator is a pigeon named subala this illustrious pigeon tells aru what is happening and guides her through the door of many to go and find her siblings and so aru meets mini short for yamini another young girl whose family is also frozen the two unlikely sisters travel to the other world where they meet lord hanuman and urvashi to get some guidance here they find out that mini is the daughter of dharmaraj and aru is the daughter of indra so they are like yudhishthira and arjuna of this generation mini gets a mirror and aru gets a ball from the devas and off they are sent on their quest they must get the sprig of the youth bite of the adulthood and a sip of an old age these three keys will allow them to enter the kingdom of death here they will find the pool of the past by looking into this pool they will find the secret to defeating the sleeper and while doing this they also must awaken the celestial weapons or divyastras and get those before the sleeper does a lot of steps for the two young girls can they achieve the impossible and succeed in their mission that is to be found by reading the book and now on to our thoughts on the book i liked the book for its lightness humor and vibrant energy Roshni Chokshi keeps the narrative filled with snappy conversations and zappy one-liners as the characters get introduced and come to terms with where they have all landed. A retelling of Indian mythology is a very popular genre and every year countless books come out with that concept at their center. This book blends the modern with the ancient. Its central idea is the rejuvenation of the Pandava brothers in five young girls. but the girls are from our world and they bring up a lot of popular cultural references from the matrix to the hunger games or to the game of thrones to bollywood while chasing their fate through the mythological puzzles and stories told by their indian parents at home for example the author recreates the night bazaar in way of a huge supermarket that caters to the needs of worlds of humans, demons, demigods and a lot more. Who says it looks like a supermarket to them? Who says they are even in United States? The world has many faces, children. It's only showing you one at a time. The night bazaar has had to adapt, change form and account for things like families moving to new countries and imaginations evolving or when the author tells the story of how a murderer turned into a sage rishi valmiki and brings him into the story when the girls go to him for advice valmiki not only forces them to speak in verse but also talks about writing the epics covering their adventures Unless your life you want to curse the time is nigh to speak in verse This is the new age of epics we have the legends and poems of yore but it's time we offered readers some more promise to give me one day of your life and i will grant you the gift of less strife The author does a good job of blending a lot of mythological stories in short doses. For example, the story of the demon who burns everything she touches, or the stories of Urvashi and Paurava, or Shukra and Irsa, Samudra Manthan, and a lot more. 
she makes the indraprastha into a true palace of illusions and sends the girls to the court of ritus or seasons because most of the stories are in small doses and glimpses she has a bit more freedom to tell those and can make a few changes for example the story of arjuna and the eye of the bird here becomes story of arjuna and the eye of the fish or bhasmasur becomes brahmasur and so on the mythology and magic become the spice in the story of two young girls and their adventure to fight demons both internal and external through it all through the story of valmiki through the stories of shakuni and suyodhana and to the stories of aru and mini there is a central thread as to whether people can change aru thinks not but then shakuni who caused the war of mahabharat is helping the pandavas now and suyodhana did his best to fight his own destiny of becoming a sleeper so maybe people can change at any rate it is important to believe that they can because we all make mistakes in life and if there were no second chances there will be no redemption aru herself made a mistake when she lit the lamp or was it just a matter of time one of the best things about stories was that villains could be heroic and heroes could do evil everyone has a bit of good and bad in them makes you wonder who the villains really are was she a heroine if all she did was a fix a mistake she made or was it a heroic because she was willing to fix it in the first place both the girls aru and mini have their own struggles aru feels lonely and abandoned while her mother devotes almost all her time in tracking ancient indian artifacts while mini is always left behind by the parents who believe her brother would be the next pandava both girls struggle at finding their place in the schools and generally their classmates are not fond of them and it is very hard to deal with the feeling of not belonging at that age i just don't want to be left behind it happens to me all the time and i hate it aru was tired tired of lying tired of imagining the world as it could be and not as it was she was tired of making herself bigger and better in her own head when it was clear that she never would or could be in her real life through this quest both girls find a family they belong to through magic and mythology they discover a lot more of their inner self people are a lot like magical pockets they far bigger on the inside than they appear to be on the outside escaping was discovering a part of oneself that no one else could find they also learn what it is like to be destined for something in stories it is a glorious thing in real life not so much imagine having no control over your own life or the freedom to make your own choices if the journey of your life was already written for you then was there any point in making any effort but we humans always want to make our own fate and we may make a lot of mistakes on the way but that's what life is all about living be warned regret will always follow it is the price of aiming true for sometimes when we take the deadliest aim we are nothing if not reckless secrets are curious things they are flimsy and easily broken a fact on the other hand is strong and powerful unlike a secret it's out there for everyone to see and know 
and that can make it more terrifying than even the deepest darkest secret our destinies aren't chains around our necks but wings that give flight this series of books is a good example of how you can blend ancient mythology with your imagination to create an adventure story that will resonate with today's children the book proved to be popular and so has been followed by three more books in the series and we will be reviewing them here at thinkerviews platform also you can also find the author interview in roshni chokshi's own words about how she conceived the series and so on on any of the popular video platforms so in summary we have enjoyed the series so far and can recommend it to all young readers who love mythology and adventures filled with magical beings and weapons think our views rating for the series is it 8 out of 10 So please let us know have you read those books and whether you like them is there any other series that you are enjoying and would like us to review at thinker views platform please subscribe to the channel hit the like button if you're enjoying this podcast and until the next time thank you for listening